Hello students, today we will start with the dermatomes of upper limb. So the term dermatome is the combination of two ancient words means derma meaning skin and tome means cutting or thin segment. So it is an area of uh, skin which is innervated by single dorsal root of spinal nerve which is called, termed as dermatome. So each somite, developmentally if you see during somatic period, each somite has a corresponding spinal nerve. So we know that this is the neural tube from the superior view. On each side of the neural tube, if you understood somites, you will be knowing about the paraaxial mesoderm. So paraaxial mesoderm gives rise to segmented appearance which are these bulgings present on the either side of the developing neural tube. So these bulgings are called as somites and from the nerve tube later the spinal nerves which arise they go to their corresponding somites on either side. So each somite has got sclerotome, dermatome, myotome. So the dermatome component of the somite forms the dermis of the skin. So as the dermis migrates along with the developing limb bud, the nerve also gets dragged along with the developing limb bud to that particular dermatome. So Dermatome is the one which is the unit of the skin which is supplied by a single dorsal root of spinal nerve. So each somite has a corresponding spinal nerve which is formed in the early stages itself. And by extension this corresponding uh, dorsal root of the spinal nerve that innervates a dermatome. So a dorsal roots are organized in segments. So these dorsal roots they are organized in segments and dermatomes are as well. And they are why the term dermatome refers to a segmental in, innervation of the skin because we see in the early stages of the embryo each segment each part of the somite has got its own nerve supply. So now I hope you got an idea about dermatome developmentally. So in the trunk the arrangement of dermatomes is simple and it is typical. So because the spinal nerves supply, uh, they do not form any plexus in the trunk. Directly the nerves go and innervate into the skin directly on the dorsal side. So they are arranged in a segmental fashion. Whereas a typical dermatome extends on each side of the trunk from a uh, anterior median line to the posterior median line. So the dermatomes are evenly spaced horizontally uh, along the thorax and abdomen. So they uh, run in a different longitudinal pattern on the upper and lower limbs. So you can see here uh, the map of upper limb where we know the uh, upper limb is supplied by the brachial plexus which has got root value from C4, C5 to T1. T1, T2, C4 to C5. The dermatomes in uh, thorax and abdomen, it is not a problem. They are arranged evenly and they are uh, supplied in a proper segmental fashion and there are no plexus on the uh, thorax region and no spinal plexus in the abdomen region. So it is uh, easy to find the dermatomes. Whereas in the upper limb and the lower limb, uh, before supplying, we know that it forms the brachial plexus and lumbosacral plexus to supply the lower limb. Brachial plexus will supply the upper limb. So here in this image, uh, we can see the arrangement of dermatomes in the developing upper limb. So it is a simple dermatomal pattern to begin with C5 uh, supplying the preaxial strip. So if you see here this line is the axial line of the developing upper limb bud. This segment is the preaxial segment. The caudal segment here is the post axial segment. So initially 
the uh, cervical nerves C3, C4 it is written here and as we know the developing limb bud along it we can see the dermatomes extending into the developing limb buds. So in the limbs the arrangement of dermatome is a little complicated because of the rotation of the limbs during their development. Uh, it becomes further complicated because the spinal nerves are supplying these upper limb form plexus uh, before supplying the upper limb. So because of the plexus and because of its rotation, the dermatomal pattern is little complicated in the upper and lower limbs. So during development, uh, before rotation, each limb has got pre-axial and post-axial borders. So this side is the pre-axial border. This is the pre-axial border and the other side is the post-axial border. To understand the distribution, uh, we have to imagine someone standing in the upright and then leaning forward to touch the floor or to touch their fingertips. So when you do that, your thumb will be in line with the great toe when you try to touch. But when you stand upright and stand in an anatomical position, the thumb will be on the lateral side in the upper limb whereas the great toe is considered to be on the medial side in the lower limb. So we can understand uh, the position of the dermatomes. They are aligned in a way that they are prior to the rotation of the limbs. So the digit, digits along with the preaxial border are thumb in the upper limb. That so the preaxial border. So this side will form the thumb region. So the thumb side border, that is the lateral border, is the preaxial border. Whereas the big toe in the lower limb uh, that forms the preaxial border in the lower limb, great toe. So preaxial border is on the medial aspect in the lower limb and it is on the lateral aspect in the upper limb. So during rotation of the limbs, the upper limb rotates laterally. Okay. So as a result, uh, its preaxial border that is the thumb, it lies on the lateral side and the lower limb rotates medially. So therefore, its pre-axial border, that is the big toe, it lies on the medial side. So consequently, the dermatomes are arranged uh, in a consecutive uh, downwards on the lateral side of the upper limb and upwards and on the medial side of the lower limb. So that is the basic concept to understand why the dermatomes are arranged, how the dermatomes are arranged and why the preaxial border is on the lateral side in the upper limb and preaxial border is in the medial side in the lower limb. So talking about this dermatome map, uh, it shows the sensory distribution of each dermatome across the body and clinicians can use the test touch with a dermatome map and uh, as a way to localize the lesions. Uh, that where the uh, lesion exactly existing uh, in the central nervous system that can be located that is in the spinal cord that can be located by checking the sensory sensations in particular areas. So injury to specific spinal nerves can be determined uh, with the help of this dermatome map. So determine the extent of injury and at what level the injury had occurred. So all this you can check by checking each dermatome area you can check for the all the senses and find out the level of lesion. So for example if the patient is experiencing numbness in only one area however because of the overlapping of segmentation of the dermatomes it is unlikely that numbness would occur only in that one dorsal root is affected. So since the areas are of the skin are Typically, uh, they are not uh, exactly specifically located, they are slightly overlapped. So now this typically innervated uh, skin by at least two spinal nerves. So at least two neighboring dorsal roots would be needed to be affected for the numbness to occur. So to be very precise, uh, the dermatomes of the upper limb are arranged in a numerical sequence. So from the shoulder, to the thumb it is the preaxial border so you can write from here to here till the thumb this side i am writing it is c3 to c6 spinal segments from the thumb to the little finger that is from the thumb till the little finger 
it is C6 to C8 segments from the thumb to the little finger it is C6 to C8 segments and from the little finger to the axilla which is a post axial border from here to here it is C8 to T2 spinal segments. So this is how they are arranged in the pre and post axial borders. Uh, first we will discuss in area where we, which area is supplied by what uh, spinal segment and later we would discuss which root supplies which area. So vice versa we can study. So first starting with the area segment. So area segment around the nipple, nipple is not shown here. So around the nipple the segment is T4 segment. The tip of the shoulder means here is C4 segment. Then lateral side of the arm. So lateral side of the arm C5 segment. So this is C5 segment. Lateral side of the forearm C6. This is C6. Got it? Then thumb. Thumb itself is also C6 segment. Then coming to the hands. The middle three digits of the hands is C7 segment. So this green color area is C7 segment. Then the little finger C8. So here it is C8 to T2. So we will see the segments now. Then the medial side of the forearm. It is again C8. So it is C8. Then medial side of the arm is T1. Arm and partly forearm is T1. And axillary region T2. So this is the distribution of dermatomes in the upper limb. So the dermatomes of upper limb are innervated from the spinal nerves if you see approximately from C4 to T2. So here uh, all these are involved in the brachial plexus too. So here the organization of dermatomes is complex because the upper limb buds during embryonic development because of their rotation and because of its uh, plexus. So this is how it is formed. Let's see the uh, dermatomes from, from each uh, spinal segment so starting with the C5 anterior uh, skin below the clavicles and also over the lateral aspect of the upper arm and posterior skin around the base of the neck. So posterior skin around the base of the neck and lateral side of the arm and anteriorly we can see here lateral side of the arm. Next is the C6 that is the shoulders longitudinally and uh, also it continues till the thumb. So po middle posterior aspect of the upper limb. So if you see the posterior aspect here. So this one is C6. Okay. And C7 middle fingers. So middle fingers C7. This is on the dorsal side and ventral side within the palm. And C8 ulna side of the hand little finger. So C8 is the ulnar side of the hand and little finger on the ventral side. On the diarsal side also ulnar side of the hand and little finger. Then the medial side of the forearm is T1. So here also it is T1, medial side of the forearm. Next T2 is near the axilla. That is the anterior and posterior uh, extends to the level of upper axilla and medial and medial upper aspect of arm. So here is T2. So this is T2 on the dorsal side. So this is the anterior dermatomes and from the posterior view this is how they are distributed. So it is easy to remember. So, so C4, C5, C6, C7, C8 as we go medially T1 and T2. So as discussed in the beginning, the understanding of dermatomal arrangement is clinically important because the physicians commonly test the integrity of the spinal cord segments from C3 to T2 by performing the sensory examinations for touch, pain and temperature. 
so this is so because the sensory loss of the skin indicates the uh, involvement of particular spinal segment so this is the clinical importance of dermatomes i hope i made this topic easier for you all to understand a dermatomal pattern of upper lip thank you